Welcome to the Ask Reverend Lee Show. We are so happy and delighted that you could join us, and we thank you for doing so. Again, let me say welcome to the Ask Reverend Lee Gospel Program. This is a religious forum program designed to help others get closer to God. I'm your host, Evangelist Lee McLean of Christ the Savior Ministry, and do we have an interesting, exciting, and attractive program planned for you today. This is a religious forum question and answer format. A question has been asked, and I'm on this program to answer the question. And as usual, we will have a read a passage of scripture, we'll have prayer, and then we will go into a discussion of today's question and answer. What you see on the screen is the answer to the question. But we're going to ask the question. Our scripture lesson today is going to be taken from Jude. Jude, there's no chapters in Jude. Jude, verse 3. The Gospel of Jude, verse 3. And there you will find these words recorded in the Gospel of Jude, verse 3. Jude is talking to Christians. And I'll just read one, two, three for Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied, increased. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Let me read verse 3 again. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Jude, the gospel of Jude. Jude is talking about a common faith. Now, let me say something about common faith before I go into the prayer. Common faith uh, normally means one common faith, one set of core beliefs that make up the faith. Now, I'm a Baptist. I have one set of core beliefs that makes me a Christian, make me a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. The the Unitarian Universalists have another set of core values or no set of core values that make them Unitarian Universalists. Now, everybody in my set of common beliefs, we call ourselves intra-faith. All one common belief, intra-faith. Now, Unitarians and a Baptist 
That would be interfaith. And there is a place for interfaith, but not in salvation. Salvation is by one set of common core beliefs. And you must believe in all of them. In all of them in order to be called a Christian. If you disagree with any, if you disagree, change, modify, embellish, or reject any of these core beliefs, then you can't be intra-faith. You would have to be inter-faith. And let me say this. When you talk about interfaith, you're talking about religion. But Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a person. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. So be careful when you see this interfaith. Another name for interfaith is ecumenical. But we, in Christianity, in intra-faith, there, there is no ecumenicalism. You all must have this one set of common faiths and beliefs. Now that's, 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 that's the difference. We're talking about contending for the faith. And that word contending means defending, exhorting. Preaching, proclaiming, encouraging one set of core beliefs that makes a person a follower of Jesus Christ. And the primary core belief of Christianity that makes you a Christian is the Trinitarian view of divinity. The Trinitarian view of divinity. Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. From the beginning. Psalms 90 verse 2. Is a Trinitarian view. Genesis 1 1. Is a Trinitarian view. If you don't have a Trinitarian view. Of Genesis 1 1. It is meaningless. For you to read the rest of the Bible. Let me say that again. If you don't have a Trinitarian view of the Bible, of Christianity, even of Judaism, if you don't have a Trinitarian view, it is meaningless for you to continue to read anything after the first chapter of the Bible. Because no matter what you, no matter what you read, it will be based on on a faulty premise. And the end. Is just like the beginning. If it was faulty in the beginning. And, it, and, and you, the individual haven't changed. Then at the end. And I'm talking about at the end of your life. It's just like a bungee cord. You only need a bungee cord. When you reach the end of your fall. Immediately before you're going to be. Dashed to death on the ground. Or on the rocks. That's when you need the bungee cord to pull you back, to stop your descent, to pull you back from, from imminent danger and death. And that's what intra-faith Christianity does. Ecumenicalism and interfaith will not do it. But I remember I said there's a place for ecumenicalism. Uh, the whole world is ecumenicalism. Uh-huh. The whole world is ecumenicalism. John chapter 17 is ecumenicalism. John chapter 17 is ecumenicalism. John chapter 17 is ecumenicalism 
And it's a prayer of Jesus to his father, talking about ecumenicalism. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 to, to, to 11, recognizes ecumenicalism. There are some Christians, and then there are some sinners. And you're either one or the other. Praise the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we come today in the precious name of your darling son, Jesus. We come just to say thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness, for your tender mercies. And now, dear God, we come asking you out of the realm of your goodness, where you are sovereign and you rule supreme. Forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings, for having fallen short and missed the mark, even in our Christian walk. But continue, Lord God, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bless us as only you can bless. Open our spiritual eyes of understanding that we might behold the truths of your word and apply them to our lives. In Jesus' name. Now, wow. Uh, that was a long introduction. But I, I, I wanted to get that across to you because the Apostle Jude is talking about contending for the faith in a common salvation. And he's not talking about all paths lead to God in this common salvation. He's talking about one, 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 one. One path that leads to a right standing with God. And once you get that right standing with God, then you're in the world, but not of the world. That's why you can be intra-faith in an ecumenical setting. Because once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're no longer of the world. You're in the world. You haven't changed your physical presence. So that, that we know, you haven't changed your physical presence. You're still, a Christian is still has to live in this world. And we're still subject to the same things. So everything to all the natural elements in this world. But we have one advantage. We are one with our creator in the spirit while living in the flesh because the spirit lives on the inside of us. Don't think that this is some trickery. This is real. Now, let's talk about contending for the faith of a common salvation. Uh, why? Is it important for Christians to contend for the faith of a common salvation? Because in this church age of Christianity, there is a new era of freedom with an eternal hope and a future with a higher level of human consciousness and awareness. That's, that's why in this church age, in this age of Christianity, is a new era of freedom with an eternal hope and future. And that's what we are after. Because this life that we are living in this flesh with this blood is going to come to an end. Everybody born of a woman, born of the womb of a woman, is heading or is dying. 